SORM in a high enough dosage out of the efficacious dosages of the studies which they were recommended to be in that dosage scheme, but we're in bodybuilding abuse territory. We now are gonna face SHBG crash where your sex hormone binding globulin will go. I mean, I've had my SHBG as low as four. What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at RussoLifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. What is up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Drop a thumbs up on this video, subscribe, click all, and people are getting unsubscribed. At a rate that's pretty discerning, but we're gonna get more people subscribed to outdo the people being randomly unsubscribed. And be sure to check this channel all the time because you won't get notifications. But today, I'm going to be going into how to fix crash SHBG levels. So, I did videos on the past. I'll have Andrew throw up the um, crash SHBG SARM levels. I believe that's the one that I really go into like how SHBG works, could cause issues, and basically SHBG is not the enemy, especially when you blast gear, when you do SARMs, right? SARMs specifically horribly crash SHBG because SHBG just doesn't recognize them as a bioidentical hormone that they combine with and transport. Thus, when you, you know, exogenously add in the SARMs, they suppress your natural testosterone. Your body just knows something's binding to the androgen receptor, doesn't know what it is. It obviously knows it's not a bioidentical hormone like testosterone that wants to be transported around. And if you do that SARM in a high enough dosage out of the efficacious dosages of the studies which they were recommended to be in that dosage scheme, but we're in bodybuilding abuse territory, we now are gonna face SHBG crash where your sex hormone binding globulin will go. I mean, I've had my SHBG as low as four. That means nothing is being transported around and that means any exogenous testosterone I'm adding in with the SARM is all gonna be free testosterone that's not gonna be transported around to other tissues and that's just gonna bind randomly. So keep that into consideration that anytime you do a big steroid blast or anytime you do a SARMs hybrid cycle, AKA testosterone paired with SARMs or anytime you do a SARM cycle in super physiological dosages, meaning you're pushing the dosages so high of the SARMs that basically you're out of the efficacious dosages in the studies that would cause shutdown, right? If you're suppressed, but your body's still cranking out natural testosterone, you're obviously still gonna have SHBG. If you're trying to replace the overall androgen level, which by raising the dosage, that's what's gonna happen of the SARM, your natural testosterone is going to crash and your hormone axis, your HPTA is going to shut down or suppress to a point where there's virtually no natural testosterone being made. No natural testosterone means no need for SHBG because it can't read the SARM and transport it around. And if you're blasting grams of testosterone, if you're blasting trenbolone testosterone together if you're doing a multi-compound cycle of extreme dosages the body just gets overwhelmed the, the hpta shuts off and really unless you're just blasting a ton of test only do you really see the shbg like try and skyrocket to combat it. So if you did a lot of bioidentical testosterone and enthate, in theory, the SHBG would skyrocket because it would recognize and it would try and render the excess testosterone useless because remember SHBG is not only the transporter, but the fail safe. So your body doesn't like when there's a bunch of free testosterone floating around that causes a lot of damage. It's binding with other tissues. It's growing the prostate and overall your body wants a normal level in the reference ranges. Meaning if you push over a thousand tests, you're going to face SHBG creeping up unless you're using androgens that SHBG doesn't recognize with. So SHBG is going to step in and render that testosterone useless. That's why when people DM me on Instagram and by all means, please follow the Instagram at Russo list and shoot me a DM. I answer 20 to 30 people for free and you can watch my story content. I'm always interacting with you guys on the story and I appreciate the support diversifying myself away from this channel is that I will ask, okay, so you're feeling like shit. This is normally like a natural person or someone that's doing just like a testosterone cycle. Like I don't feel the testosterone. And I'll be like, okay, go get your total testosterone checked and your free testosterone checked. And their total testosterone will be like 1300, but their free testosterone will only be like 400. Or in a natural case, right, their total testosterone will be like 700 to 800. Be like, wow, that looks like an amazing number. And then you get the free testosterone checked, 
380. What is happening? The SHBG is binding up that testosterone, transporting it around, but if it binds up too much testosterone, you're only feeling the free testosterone. So you need an ample amount of free testosterone. At the same time, you want some SHBG in there to move the hormones around the body, to not have it binding randomly and causing all this cascading, binding, and damaging androgenic effects of androgen abuse constantly. You want the SHB there, SHBG there at a good level. Now, you're gonna face SHBG crash whether you blast steroids or you blast SARMs or you do a SARMs hybrid cycle. If you enter blast level dosages, SHBG will most likely suppress crash if the hpta crashes normally the shbg goes with it and that you'll need to recover it the best way to recover it is to go off everything let it dissipate out of your system and use hcg monotherapy so hcg monotherapy just means you could use hcg or hmg is synthetic lunizing hormone or hmg synthetic lunizing hormone and synthetic follicle stimulating hormone this is going to tell the gonads to make its own testosterone so you're making your own bioidentical testosterone out of your nuts you're growing back your nuts if you're a hypergonadal and it's putting you in a range hopefully a few dosage of under a thousand a day to try and recover the shbg once it's more in homeostasis the hbta will pick up on that start the shbg up again to bind with for free testosterone that it feels like it's too much free testosterone as well as transport the testosterone around the body like it normally does so i do hcg monotherapy after a giant blast and i actually went completely I'll have Andrew throw up the injectable SARM footage, some injectable SARM footage. When I did that massive cycle, my SHBG was like four after, in the gutter, gone gone and i was using testosterone with that cycle it was just i was doing a blast of injectable lgd a blast of yk11 it had 350 sustain on for my testosterone base and estrogen conversion when that cycle was all said and done my shbg was in the gutter and my cholesterol was destroyed now i'll do another video how i repaired my cholesterol what i did for that but for the atg went off the lgd went off everything went on to clomiphene a little tiny bit of Novadex. Then I cut out the clomiphene because I'm not trying to become natural again, right? I did a little bit of clomiphene, not trying to be natural, and then I cruised on HCG for a while, a moderate dosage of HCG that I know that keeps my personal body probably around 1100 to 800, depending on if the HCG is good or not, obviously. You guys know the deal with when you get HCG, you know, you hit on the pregnancy test, it looks good, it might be underdosed, it might be overdosed, et cetera, et cetera. I have good plugs, you can message me on Instagram, at Russell if you want to know the best HCG HMG plug, I'll let you know. But essentially, right, I did that and I recovered my SHBG back to normal. It took around a month and a half. I was taking a break from the cycle. And like I said, you can use HCG to maintain your gain. Some people do HCG only cycles as a steroid cycle. You're basically endogenously telling your balls to make more testosterone than it normally should. But it's all bioidentical testosterone that your body recognizes as bioidentical testosterone. Thus results in the SHBG coming back online for it to render some of that total testosterone useless, transport it around and keep the free testosterone in check. But recover your shbg level so you have normal transportation of androgens in the body and you don't want to run into an issue where you're constantly redlining your body which people do in the fitness industry and you have no shbg for years and that's going to bind with a lot of tissues that's going to grow a lot of tissues aka the prostate at a much more rapid rate and i hate to break it to you every single male is going to face prostate issues in their life it just depends on what rate you face them so yeah keep that in mind you won't notice these side effects but down the road they will add up and they will take a toll and it's like mitigate before it prevents itself mitigate before it prevents itself so keep that into consideration monitor your psa but know if you're blasting a gram of test that you need to keep in check that that shbg level's got to come back online after your blast is done and that sarms automatically crashed shbg in the bodybuilding dosages because sarms were meant to be used in extremely low dosages to complement your natural testosterone meaning the dosages recommended in the medical studies are to complement your natural testosterone they're not meant to suppress your natural testosterone fully down they're meant to be added in there bind with the ar while still keeping the hbta and the gonads online obviously we know people get crazy with the sarms 
myself included, which leads to an SHBG crash. You have to check that in blood work and you have to deal with that, just like you have to deal with skewed cholesterol levels because the more you leave it there, the more the side effects add up over time and you don't feel the side effects immediately. But trust me, in 20 years when you're having peeing issues and you think, oh, wow, if I just recover my, you know, SHBG levels, I'd probably have peeing issues fucking decade later, a decade and a half later. It's that dramatic and it will add up if you're not monitoring your blood work. So I hope you guys learned something today. Please subscribe, click all, follow me on Instagram. I'll see you guys in my next video.